Hi everyone, I'm Angela Clark. I am an ex Worldwide Church of God truth seeker. And this is my wonderful husband, ex Jehovah's Witness truth seeker. That's right. And so guys, I want to just let you know that I'm, I'm getting ready to share with you. I'm very excited about it. I'm going to do a seven part video series called Getting Free of the Worldwide Church of God Hooks That Keep Us Stuck. And uh, you know, the thing is that unfortunately to get free, I'm going to just tell you, I've been out for a long time. I've been out since uh, 1985. Unfortunately, when I, I got into another cult, and that one took me down a very uh, crazy road, and ended up back in my mother's clutches, and she kind of hooked me a little bit on some things like Sabbath and whatnot, specifically Sabbath. And it really took me down a very, very negative road, and I had to pull myself out of it. Dan remembers when I met him, oh, yeah. how fearful I was of Saturday and not being able to even take a drive to the mountains and enjoy myself because I had this guilt that I should be, you know, in services and that I shouldn't be, you know, doing that. I shouldn't be going to a restaurant while we're out and about and just all these fears. It was just intense. And um, I just felt like it had a hold of me, like hooks, right? We're going to talk about these hooks that, that hook us. Yeah, and I, I just want to say her golden rule is for anybody who comes into their life, into their family, if they don't keep the, the Sabbath holy, or you know, unclean and unclean foods. You're, you're not even considered a godly person. You're yeah. not even considered a Christian. That's right. And so that's what she said to me. That's right. that's my mark. If you understand that you know these holy days, and you understand the unclean foods, and you understand the Sabbath especially, then I'll sit, maybe consider you. But until then, no. I mean, consider you. What do you mean by that? Part of the family. Part of the family. Like, and part yes. of God's family too. Right. So Dan and I, uh, we started. You know, <laughs> as I told you, I got stuck in the Sabbath day thing for a while. And so Dan's like, you know, hey, let's just not, not eat the the foods we shouldn't be eating either. So we did. We did that. We tried to quit and, bacon. <laughs> yeah. Right. And nothing. You know, nothing unclean. Right. And then um, all of a sudden, my mom's like, well, you're not keeping the holy days so. though. So I won't accept you is like that. And Dan was like furious. Like, you know what? I, I'm just done with this. I'm done with trying to please you. You know, there is no pleasing you. And I'm going to tell you that that seems to be the truth about, you know, they really want you to be hooked into this whole law or nothing at all. Right. And so I just want to say this. I'm going to be telling you a story today on a series one of the video series. It's going to be about clean and unclean foods or meats, you know, foods. And I'm just going to go through a couple of stories because here's the thing. My mom hated Paul because well, I, I should say that she couldn't stand it because it was spurious scripture, she would say. And she even had this book called Ephesians. Uh, what What is it? Uh, Ephesians understood differently or yeah, I don't know. What they it rewrote was. it. They re re write of the <laughs> They Ephesians. rewrote the book of the Bible to fit the Old Testament. Right, so they could feel better about how they believe, right? So they got to twist it and somehow and rewrite it so they could feel better about it. And, uh, oh, God, I'll tell you what. So I just want to tell you, bottom line, I'm going to invite you to just open up to what I'm about ready to read to you. Because, unfortunately, to get free, guys, to get these hooks out, we have to go down this road of looking at what the Bible has to say. The whole Bible. <laughs> the whole Bible, not just the parts where it says what you want it to say. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. And I want to tell you what, I, I used to study my Bible, Bible so much. I went to Pasadena Elementary School and Junior High and at the Ambassador College. And I, I studied my Bible my whole life. So it's not like I don't know this, these stories. And then when I got out, I really studied the New Testament in a big way. I want to tell you, I'm telling you, God said that if you when you turn to God with all your heart and you repent, he said that he will take the blinders off your eyes and you will see. But until such time as you do turn to God and repent, then he, you're, that you will remain blind. So, you know, you try to see, but you can't because God has to take these blinders off, see. So unfortunately, if you can handle it and you're willing to go with me on this, I'm going to show you a, a, a road of these seven, the seven video series of where you're going to be able to get free if, if you could let go of this belief system that you've been hooked into since maybe for like me since i was a child dan too i mean when you're, when you're hooked you're hooked and i and i would say i wouldn't even say you got to let go I, I would say you got to expand on it and and that's where the new testament comes in see the old testament if you talk to somebody who's into the law and the holy days all they'll do is keep quoting the first five books of the Bible. They'll say, it says right here, it's a Sabbath, keep it holy. What part of that don't you understand? Well, can we go to the New Testament? No, 
It says keep it holy. I mean, my, and, it's not that Worldwide doesn't <clears throat> use New Testament. We do, absolutely, yeah. we do. But we don't like those Pauline writings because they, they kind of mess with our head. Well, it messes with your head because there's meaning that's blocked for us. I'm just telling you. So if you really, really, really want to get free, in my way of looking at it, okay, you can do what you want with this. I'm just here to help. I'm not trying to force you into anything. You're here right. on my channel because maybe, just maybe, you like what I'm thinking about talking about here and maybe you trust that i might have something that might help actually get you free and get these hooks out well guess yes. what i might dan and i might That's we right. might have something but i'm telling you we have to unfortunately look at some of these scriptures that they call spurious in the worldwide church of god they don't like and those are the ones that are the secrets i'm going to tell you so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to start with the meats clean and unclean foods to start I don't know why if I feel led to start there, but that's where we're going to start. Yep. So what I got to do is I got to read you a little bit of something. I'm going to do my best to make it interesting, but it, it is going to be out of the Bible and I'm going to make it fun because I'm great at storytelling. So I'm going to do the, my best to storytell and then I'll read you the important part so that no one gets mad at me and thinks that I'm just making this stuff up. Okay. I have to do it. Please just bear with me because I think that you might see that there's some real truth in here, some real secrets. So here we go. This is uh, starting in Acts 10, verse 1 through 48. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, okay? I'm going to skip. I'm going to tell you kind of the story. So there, there was this Roman centurion, and he was known as the Italian, is of the Italian regiment, which I didn't even know that until I was just studying to do this. I thought he was Roman, uh, but he's Italian regiment of the, the uh, I guess the Roman centurion. Was, I guess you'd consider him a Roman centurion. Anyway, he's of the Italian regiment. Regiment. So he was a devout and God-fearing man, and about three in the afternoon, he had a vision, and he distinctly said he saw an angel of God that came to him and it said, Cornelius, and he, he was he said he was terrified, just terrified. He said, who is it, Lord? And so it was like Paul when he was experiencing that, that whole thing, right? Like, who are you, Lord? Remember that? The angel answered and said that his prayers had been answered and that uh, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial to God. And so now send men to Joppa and you're going to find there Simon, the Peter, who is staying with Simon the Tanner by the sea in Joppa. So off uh, these men went. So there were three, two servants of Cornelius went as well as his devout soldier. And he sent these three men to go find Paul. So they went to this area and sure enough, they found him. And so at the same time, what was happening when they're on their way, on the day that they arrived, Paul was up in the uh, the upper room, it says, and he was praying and he was waiting for lunch. He was hungry. And all of a sudden, he's, it says that he went into a trance and it, it, the sheet came down out of heaven and it had uh, clean and unclean food spread all over it and um, mixed together and, and, he, and then it said, Peter, take, kill, and eat. And Peter said, no, my Lord, I've never eaten anything unclean. I'm not about to do that. And he goes, so it, it happened two more times. And then it said immediately, um, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. And that was uh, verse 15 in this chapter 10 of Acts. And so anyway, again, it happened three times and immediately the sheet was taken back up into heaven each and every time. So while Peter was wondering about the, mean, the meaning of all of this that he had seen and is just contemplating it, um, all of a sudden he, he's told by the spirit of God that says, Simon, three men are looking for you. Go now get up and go downstairs and don't hesitate to go with, with these men for I have sent them. So he goes down and sure enough, these men say that, you know, the whole story about my, my, our, our boss sent us this Cornelius and he said that, um, you know, I'm to ask you to come and talk to us about what you know, you have a message for us and we're, and we're asking you to come with us. So what did Peter do? See, now listen, you need to, if you don't remember this from the past, that Jews do not ever eat with or have mm. a conversation with a Gentile person. So this was a Gentile, not a Jew. And so he invited these men in. Having just seen this vision, he understood after he was contemplating, what does it mean? That that we're not to call any man unclean. Uh, if God calls them clean, they're clean. So all of a sudden, he's he's got this man, at the, these men at the door, 
saying that our master Cornelius is uh, wanting you to come and visit us and um, he's of the Italian regiment and, and he's a, a you know centurion and Peter's like okay I get it I get it so he says um, well so he's talking to, to him and he so anyway what ends up happening is he says I want you to stay the night so they stay the night and then in the morning they get on their way and they go down to uh, see Cornelius they take him to his house and they talk outside and it was a wonderful greeting and then uh, they get up and they go into the house and there's this huge bunch of people in there and he said now you are well aware that it's against our law for a Jew to associate with a uh, or visit even a Gentile he says to them but God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean so when I was sent for I came without any hesitation may I ask why you sent for me and so anyway Cornelius tells the story that an angel had shown up and, and gave him this message and that so he sent for him so Peter said okay I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right interesting don't you think okay so we got a non-jew he doesn't keep the law he eats impure and improper meats um, Peter has them stay the night not allowed to do that it's against the Jewish law now he goes with them and he's saying, okay, I get it. I get it. God gave me that message. He probably told him all about the sheets that came down from heaven and the whole thing, don't you think? So um, he said, you know, um, he said the message. So you know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus, who is Lord of all, right? And he goes in to tell the whole story about the gospel, about Jesus came and what he came for and the whole, you know, the, the, the plan. Of, of what Jesus had come to do. So he explains all that. And when he's about done explaining it, all of a sudden, it's Peter, um, while he was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. So all these Gentiles suddenly had the Holy Spirit come upon them. They were circumcised, no, I'm sorry, the circumcised believers who, who had come with Peter. So Peter went with people too that were J Jews and they were circumcised. But it says the circumcised believers who came with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God, which as you remember, on, when Jesus, after Jesus died, they went to the upper room and 40 days after he died, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues. Well, now this has happened to these Gentiles who don't eat the right foods. They don't keep the holy days. They don't keep the Sabbath. None of it. And wow. so, th so then Peter said, surely no, one, um, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized. And so he, he ordered that they be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, they, th the, and so they did. They, they were baptized and they, have, they received the Holy Spirit. And already they had because before he even baptized them, they already were baptized with the Holy Spirit. But it says, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So they went ahead and did the secondary, you know, commandment of the law to be baptized as the, the way that John the Baptist had showed them to do it. And then it said that Peter stayed with them for a few days. So guess what that means, guys? If, just think about it. It means that he had to eat their food, okay? Um, he was already breaking the law by being with these 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 dirty people you know that they were considered sinners and mm -hmm. you don't eat with them and, and they don't eat the right foods they're, they're contaminated you know and so they 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 were they were he was shown by God Peter that you can't you can't do this anymore um, they're clean and what I call clean you don't call mm. unclean and and so you now you realize okay now he's gonna have to eat at a table it's unclean their foods not boiled right to getting the way the Jewish law required he was having to eat their food it was given to him and you know that it talks about that in the Bible elsewhere when they, they give you food you don't ask questions you blah, blah 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 we'll talk about that later but anyway this is what happened so interesting don't you think so, Just, so could you imagine being there being Peter and going what the heck's going on know. you know the Holy Spirit's coming down on these people or you know seem like people that aren't worshiping the same way right right and then right. and then he's eating the unclean food <laughs> it'd be like a conundrum like how can this be happening yes how can this this is totally against everything oh, yeah, totally. that i know and believe everything and so you know that's the same way in in the witnesses and in the worldwide the the new testament so a lot of the new testament seems to to 
go contrary. But it really isn't contrary, but it seems to be it contrary to from, be. from the Old Testament, but it isn't. Because, you know, when I used to think of those laws, when I heard about those laws, there was no black and white. If you, if you did not keep the law, you were dead, right? If, if you broke those, those laws, you, you died that was deserving of death. So we know that that can't continue to today. You know, a lot of these churches, they're not even keeping the law properly. They're not eating totally kosher food. They're eating partial kosher. You mean and, the Jewish, uh, Jewish yeah. people? You know, I'm yeah. just saying, they, there's a whole <laughs> regimen yeah. of foods, and, you know, there's a million ways to prepare the food in the in the law, right? Right, it's got to be done in a certain way, with special vessels, washed in certain ways, and yeah. the whole thing. And yeah, and so, so anybody can say they're doing it wrong, I'm doing it wrong. But, but I just thought when Angela read that, I went, wow. I just put myself, and I think we have to do that, don't we? We have to put ourselves in Peter's place and say, what is the Holy Spirit saying? What is God saying? Right. That's exactly right, Dan. And so so now we have Peter in this next story, and this is very short, okay? But we have this next story where now Peter is meeting Paul. Paul's, Paul's showing up. So Paul shows up to Jerusalem, okay? And it just starts abruptly. Galatians 2, verse 11 through 21 is this particular story. And again, Paul is talking here. And this is, starts out in verse 11 with, But when Peter came to Antioch, uh, I had to oppose him to his face, for what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile believers, who were not circumcised. But afterward, when some friends of James, which is Jesus' brother, came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. Hmm interesting he was afraid of criticism <gasps> from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision as a result other Jewish believers followed Peter's hypocrisy and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy this is pretty strong this is Paul talking man you know it's like talk about exposing the, the you know the the whole thing oh, man. like <laughs> oh my gosh this is the Bible for the whole world to see that they really screwed up here and it's, you know why? Because it's for us. This is why it was caused to be written so that we would see the, the hypocrisy of this and understand that Paul was very upset because he said it was very wrong. So verse 14, when I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile now, why are you mm. now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions, foods, Sabbaths, circumcisions, holy days. Uh, you and I are Jews by birth. So verse 16, yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. Wow. And we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law guys wow for no one will ever be made right with god by obeying the law mm, that is a strong one so then i'm just going to skip on down to verse 18 rather i am a sinner if i rebuild i am a sinner if i rebuild the old system of law i already oh tore down oh for when i tried to keep the law it condemned me because right, guys, we can't keep it right. If, we, if it says in the Bible that if you broke the Sabbath in the Old Testament, you were stoned to death. If you dishonored your parents, you were stoned to death. If you committed adultery, you're stoned to death. The law kills. It talks about that later. We'll find out. That's why this needed to be gone away. You know, God really dealt with me in a powerful way, which I'll tell you the story at some other time, but to show me that this had to go away, this old system of things, because you couldn't do it, guys. It's just, no. we have to be led by the spirit now. It's, it's like the unction or the, the ability, the desire, the, the, the being moved about by the Holy Spirit is what gets it done because we don't want to, I don't know, cheat our brother. We don't want to sneak around and do things even though it's not a, technically against the law. You know, we're, we, we do all these sneaky little things, you know, that we do. Like, for example, it says that if we even so much as look at a woman as to desire her or whatever, then, then you've uh, committed adultery. Okay? This is, this, so this is like impossible. You know? It's You're impossible. Guilty. So everybody's guilty and everyone's then deserving of death. Do you see? This can't work. God is not like this. He doesn't want his children always fearing death. 
and and having to always time as soon as you get done with sacrificing the one thing you had to sacrifice for the year all of a sudden you go away and sure enough the devil made you sin again the very next day and now you got to wait a whole year just to go back and have the day of atonement again this is baloney this yeah, is my, stupid you know my question is what do you do with what you just read right there how do you rewrite that I mean, that was so clear to me. Uh -uh. It's like the only thing you could do as a person who doesn't believe that is tear that part out of the Bible. Mm. I mean, how do you rewrite it? That is so clear it to me. It is clear. And, and how do you ignore it? it you know, and, I, and that's a question I ask from an outsider. I ask the, the people, do you guys believe in the New Testament or do you just live out of the Old Testament? I ask them that. I said, because if, if you're only believing in the Torah, then tear off the rest of your Bible and throw it out. Because that, to me, is so clear, and that, to me, makes a lot of sense. And again, Dan, the world writers don't call the first, first five books of Torah. We just call it the Old Testament and the New oh, Testament. Gotcha. So, okay. Dan, uh, just, it's okay. I'm don't just, worry about it, guys. Yeah. He's doing the very best he can because he's got I've some I've just influence. had to deal with both. Yeah, I my mother it. went Masonic after yeah. she got out of Worldwide. So, and Same so, kind of thing. Yeah. Foods and, and clean foods. Yeah, and, right. So, but anyway, they, she focuses on the Torah, and she talks about she Not anymore. She's now in the United Church of God, my mom. So it so is my brother. Um, so just real quick. So so it says, I, I am a sinner. If I rebuild the old system of law, I already tore down. For when when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. So that I might live for God. Think of that. See, when we're trying to live by a set of rules, we're trying to feel the sense of safety. I don't need to commune with God. I don't need to be led by the Spirit. I just obey a set of rules and laws that I can decide for myself that I'm good enough to be right with God. And when I die, everything's going to be right with me and God because I've kept the law. I kept the Sabbath day. I paid my tithes. I, I did the Sabbath day perfectly. I mean, baloney. Who can do the Sabbath day perfectly? Who, who can do anything perfectly? So you're always afraid of this death, right? So... He died to, so we gotta, we, we gotta just be willing to be brave, to be uh, faith filled with trusting that God is gonna guide our every day and that it's not gonna be by our good works. For, for it is by grace you are saved through faith, this not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's in Ephesians. I forgot which chapter. Right, anyway, that's what it says. It is by grace you're saved, by grace. And this not of yourselves, not of yeah, works. So clear. Lest any man should boast. You see, you're boasting that, that I'm, I kept the Sabbath day. I paid my tithes. I did all this stuff right. And so uh, you have to let me in the kingdom or whatever you want to call kingdom. So let's just keep reading. Um, it is no longer, uh, okay, so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. Whoa. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God. Trusting in myself, trusting in my good works, trusting in my getting, doing the law perfectly. No one can do it. No one. It sounds like you went from worshiping, you know, you know, doing this outside ritual thing, right? Uh -huh. I'm just saying for my yes. group. To worshiping in spirit and truth. That's right. You've, you've given your life over to God and you're trusting that the Holy Spirit is working with you to change you. And, you, you know, you're not just like a robot doing the law and hoping to get, you, you know, see, when I read, when I hear you read that in the Old Testament, yeah. I don't hear a lot about transformation. The New Testament talks about transformation. Let this mind be in you. But the Be Old Testament, Testament talks about right saving here. yourself, mm -hmm. you know, right. going to, to, to church, you know, doing this, not eating these foods, you know, Sabbath and, and all that. It, it sounds like saving yourself as opposed to the New Testament transforming yourself. I don't know. Yeah, that, it says be transformed yeah. by the renewing of your mind. So basically when we pray and we're asking, ask, seek, knock, keep knocking, bug God to come down. Remember that story in the Bible where the guy is in bed at night and then he goes and he says, knock, 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 knock. Please, please come down. Give me some bread. I've got guests visiting and I need to give them something. Guys, that's even symbolic. It's symbolic of I don't have what they came for. I need you to give me mm. spiritual food to give to these 
guests that I've got visiting me come down and help me. It's like, God, I'm going to keep knocking until you, until you listen to me. And so he came down and he, and he opened the door and he gave him what he asked for. And so that, that I, I know it seems weird, but we show our sincerity when we keep asking and we keep knocking. That's why mm. the Bible says, keep knocking, keep asking, keep seeking, and the door will be open unto you. It's what it says in the Bible. So just re so the last little line, and then I'm done, okay? So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. Oh, good point. Wow. That's one to meditate on. Yeah, that is one to meditate on. That's a good point. There's no need for Christ to die. If if you just have to do these few things, right? Right. The Sabbath, the unclean foods, and all the stuff that's involved, then there was no reason for Christ. And honestly, from what I've seen, just visiting some of these people and talking to them, <laughs> they're way more over here in the law than they are, you know. Yeah, and, and this one is the law, the law of love. And what is the law of rules and regulation duty. and duty and duty bound? And, and that ends up making you kind of leveless, maybe very leveless. Depends. But so, so do you understand, too, that the Old Testament is kind of like a contract? It's kind of like a, a law. It's a it's like when somebody dies, there's a testament and, and, it, and it's a contract between God and his people. Well, that old way, that old system, it said that Jesus said, that, that he came to, to take care of that so that we weren't under that system of things so that we don't have to be destroyed so that Satan doesn't have his free will over us. Jesus conquered him. That, and so then he put into place let the new law and did away with that old one, which we'll talk about another time. So I just wanted to point out that, you know, so we're no longer under the, the written law, code, rules, regulations that kill for the law kills, it says in the New Testament. Uh, that we're now under the grace, the law of grace, which is not that we just do whatever that you know H we want. We we want to do good naturally right. because that Holy Spirit causes it. So if you're not doing, trying or wanting at least to do good, then you know that you're not being guided by the Holy Spirit. And maybe you could just ask for the Holy Spirit to come up on you. So that you could naturally want to do good. That's the trick. Not that you're doing good all the time, but you sincerely want to. That, that, that's a good point you made. Because that was one of the things, you know, we were about as the witnesses. You know, we had to do good or we were dead. We didn't really want to do good. We had to do good. And it, it seems kind of like that way with the law. Yeah, You know what I mean? I have to keep the yes, ladies. Yes, I have, have to, to do. And and. and to me, like being born again, born of the Spirit, like we're talking about here, is is now I want to. I want to be made whole. I want to do your will. I want to serve. I want to give. I want to be all I can be. I want to have the mind of Christ as opposed to I have to do this and you better do this or else. And if you don't do this, you're dead. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Mm. It's just a horrible way to live. Anyways, guys, um, there's so many things I want to tell you, but I'm trying to keep these shorter so that you don't get bored. And I would love to know what you think. Yes. And uh, if you want to learn a little bit more, um, th this site is called Angela's Inspirations. Um, I'm sorry, X Worldwide Truth Seekers. But yeah, X World Tri Truth Seekers. But if you want to know more about me and whatever, you can go to angelasinspirations.com and, and learn a little bit more. And then Dan, together we've got um, um, Dan's website is prodigaljourneys.com. And then we've got another channel called Life After Religion. So, you know, once you've gotten out of organized religion um you have to learn how to be and dan and i visited hundreds of churches me and dan all kinds of churches lots of christian but all kinds of others besides and um this is we this life after religion what do you do when religion no longer is is doing it for you then this is about the life after how do you deal with all of this so you might enjoy that too just throwing it out there but anyway, Be sure to follow her, you know, because on her oh, yeah, channel, she, this is me. a series. Yes. She's going to be just unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. And, and if, if you sort of tune in, you'll kind of get how she's got where she's at right. with her, her understanding and why she understands and, and the freedom she's experiencing because she's not, 
bound by a lot of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, like I said, you know, I had a lot of people beating me up in the beginning when I tried to put something out on the uh, Facebook or something, and it was really intimidating. But oh, you know yeah. what? Um, I I'm I'm past that, and I, I'm ready to um, pitch in, roll up my sleeves, do what I got to do. Uh, you know, if I don't if I don't like it, well, I don't have to you know keep yeah, listening to it. Right. I'm going to do my best just to try to help. That's all I can say. And if you don't like it, well, I don't. What can I say? You I'm don't just have doing to the go best on the channel. You don't have to go on the That's channel. That's right. That's right. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed it. Please, again, please like this video. Um, please um, subscribe and let me know your thoughts, okay? I really do want to know what, what you're thinking and how you're feeling. You know, what do you think about all of this? And what, what's your hangups? What, what is it that you're still afraid of? I mean, there are hooks, right? I'm trying to help get the hooks out. And let me tell you how you get hooks out. You have to just examine, dig down. And like, for example, you're listening to this stuff. This is digging down. This is digging down where you don't want to go. I get it. I was afraid of that Bible so bad, like I told you. But it, you, to get where we need to go, where we get the hooks out, we got to go here. And I'm sorry that you have to go down this road that's uncomfortable. Oh my gosh, you don't want to hear this, you know, Bible stuff. You know, I get it. And I know this is painful. But if you do want to get free and you do want to get unstuck from all the guilt and the shame and the fear and all that stuff that the devil's tried to make sure you're staying hooked in, that's what the really that's what his job is okay but the law is what kind of is his tool unfortunately and the freedom isn't free no you got to dig a little bit you got to sort dig. it out they call it bringing it into the light of reason you're taking old testament new testament and you're pulling them up into the light yeah and then you're examining them and weighing them right and that's what we're trying to do examine in the light of reason the bible says to do that that's right and so again you know the devil tries to use this law to beat us up i mean it's the perfect thing because you could say, just like you did on, on Job, well, yeah, look at him, you know, and just accusing all day long. I said that he, that he was accused before God day and night. And so that's what we're dealing with. And so he uses the law to condemn, to accuse. If there's no law, then the devil doesn't have anything to accuse us of, see? So then he, th that means that he's conquered. So Jesus, it, I believe, wants to help each and every one of us get this this just like God helped Jesus do is to get the devil under your feet and get his guilt and his hooks and his accusations and his condemnations and he uses the law to do this by getting you to break the Sabbath or whatever and guilting and shaming you to death I'm trying to help you say I don't have to listen to you anymore you know this call your ego mind devil whatever I don't have to listen to you anymore this is not true and the only way you're going to know that it's not true is because you know something else that can be in its place and something else that makes more sense and like tearing out a few pages in your made up mind and saying I'm gonna open up to something that might be better and then if you find that something better you tear out those pages and you be done with them burn them and don't even you know try hard not to ever look at those pages again because you learned what is you now know absolutely this absolutely makes sense to me God has shown me that this is the, tr the way this is the truth this is the life this is the light and you want to have that now. You have to trade it. You literally have to trade one for the other. I'm inviting you. That's what we're doing. Take it. I'm not forcing you. You're on my channel. So you don't have to listen if you don't want to. But we're going to have the next uh, talk. Probably the next one will be on the Sabbath, I would bet you. That's what I'll probably talk about in the, the video number two of this seven series. Okay. Well, thank you again for listening. Have a All wonderful right. rest of the day or night, whatever it is for you. And thanks again for listening. Give All me right. your thoughts. Do your yes. thoughts. Give me your likes. Thank you.